You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Orphan Black After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Orphan Black After Show. Hello, Clone Club. Welcome to another edition of After Buzz Orphan Black. I am your host, Nando Velasquez, and across from me, two lovely people. First of all, let's go to Mr. Will Link. Hello, how are you? The loveliest of them all, Will yes, Link. The yes, the fairest of them all. <laughs> and not to be outdone, of course, Anna Koppel, beautiful Anna Koppel. That's me. Yes, and we are uh, we are missing Matt Lieberman, so I know he's got a little fan club there, so uh, he was not able to stay for this show, but he will be back next week, and trust me, he is very, very bummed because we actually have another guest today. We have a very exciting guest uh, calling us from all the way from Toronto, I believe, right? From uh, well, from the East Coast, three hours ahead. It's uh, it's Tatiana Melanzi's body double who does everything: does Sarah, Kasima, uh, Helena, Rachel, clones we don't even know of yet, probably. Uh, Catherine Alexander. Hello, Catherine. Hi, thanks for having me. Great, thanks Thanks a lot for coming on. We really appreciate it. And we're really excited to have you on to talk because I'd have to say you're probably the best known stand-in in the biz right now <laughs> with all the work that you do. It's so impressive, Catherine. We have so many questions for you. Can you walk us through I, I mean, my mind has been blown. Can you walk us through <laughs> that scene, that last scene where where uh, Sarah and Helena become oh, yeah. real sestras and they hug and they walk away hand in hand. How did they do how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little bit of a long process. But um we started the day off, I believe I was Helena first that day. Um so we get to set and we get in hair and wardrobe and uh, makeup. And um, so we blocked the scene as me being Helena and Kat being Sarah. Um, and she kind of plays both roles. So she blocks out what she wants to do. Um, and then we go ahead and film it with me as Helena and Kat as Sarah. And then we flip our costumes and everything. So we have another about two hours back in the hair and makeup trailer and come back and she plays Helena and then I play Sarah and we do it all over again. Wow. I, I would have to say, you know, we, we've seen, I guess in the course of history uh, on TV and movies, we've seen uh, people play uh, the same character. Uh, you know, it's usually a split screen back in the old days, and and now we see this techno dolly that you guys are using, which is really amazing. And I know it's 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 a painstaking process, from what I understand. I, I saw the clip that BBC put with you and showing a, a scene with you playing Allison and uh, and Tatiana playing uh, Sarah, I believe. But to mm -hmm. see last week's, because because I know obviously to see that last week's scene in the shower with uh, with Sarah pretty much tied up and Helena hugging her like that. It's just amazing to see, I mean, how much work, I guess, how was that more laborious than other work that you've done, like that scene with Allison that they've shown in that BBC clip? Um, it's all kind of the same. It's always going to be a long, a long day when we're in doing clone stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, whenever two clones touch each other, then it is a little bit more difficult. And um, usually they they have to kind of cut around me and use parts of me and parts of Kat and so it's especially with Helena's hair being as frizzy as it is I'm sure it's a bit of a nightmare for mm -hmm. for all of the VFX guys but um but yeah that's a little more complicated they'll film it with me from behind um and then they'll film a straight on mm -hmm. um version where they'll kind of use parts of it'll be my hands touching Tatiana usually mm. um, and then but then parts of her it'll put her face on my body or something weird like that usually <laughs> This is uh, such an important but also unusual role that you serve on this show. I was wondering how you how you got into this. Was this something you had to audition for, or or how did you come to be on Orphan Black? 
Yeah, it was an audition process. Um, it was kind of interesting. I actually started working on the show early on as a reader in the initial auditions uh, when they were auditioning for Sarah's and Felix's. Um, so I was actually uh, Jordan Gavaris's first reader in his very first audition for, oh, wow. for Felix which was kind of cool. So I knew about the show and was kind of working on it. Um, and then once they cast Kat, they were looking for the body double stand-in, um, and I got an audition for that. So I, I went in and auditioned just for the casting director, um, and I played Sarah, Katia, and Alfin, I believe, mm. and kind of did my own interpretation of them because they were really trying to find an actor and not just a stand-in. Um, then I had a callback with the casting director and John Fawcett, the director and co-creator, and then I had a third audition where Tatiana was there, and we um, played off each other. Um, and then I kind of did, like, hair and skin consultations and body consultations and all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. And, yeah, so it was a bit of a process, but it was a lot of fun. It, it must be interesting, just you mentioning that, just the fact that since you are technically supposed to look exactly like this other person, at least with, with your height and, and your shape and even your hair, you mentioned about the frizziness. Is it, is it really a painstaking process for you to try and, and keep, um, you know, looking like Tatiana? Is there ever any concern about, you know, if something changes with Tatiana, that you have to mimic that? Um, it's not too bad. There is definitely, like, one year she, during a break, I think she went on a vacation and I was a little worried about her getting tanned and <laughs> me not being tanned. Oh. Um, so, so sometimes you kind of have to think about that. But um, we're pretty similar in, in our dimensions. And usually when they're using me, they're pretty close. Mm. Um, there'll be a pretty tight shot over my shoulder or something like that. Mm. Um, and the, the wardrobe and the, the hair team are great. So whether I'm wearing a wig or they're using my own hair, they match it really well. So I do kind of, I can't eat too many cupcakes because she's pretty thin. <laughs> I kind of have to keep that in mind. But mm. other than that, it's, it's not too bad. Mm. How long does it take you to get into hair and makeup? Um, it depends on the character. It's it's definitely quicker for me because I they're just doing hair on me. They don't do makeup um, since you don't see my face anyways. So I'm, I'm definitely quicker than, than it takes Pat. But... Um, Sometimes it's usually quicker if I'm wearing a wig. That way they can just stick all my hair up and, and fit the wig on, and then it's done. Um, so I think Sarah actually takes the longest because they use my own hair for Sarah in season two. Season one, I wore a wig. Mm. But season two, they use my hair. So it's a lot of kind of straightening and then trying to curl it because both Tad and I have curly hair to begin with. But mm. they need to straighten it to get the frizz out and then try and curl it afterwards. So that's a bit longer of a process. So I'd say it's it's usually about an hour or so for me, um, and about two hours for Chad. Hmm. Do you find uh, sorry, sorry? Do you find it any uh, any of the characters? I, I'm just curious as to I know Tatiana plays each clone very differently. How, do you uh, do you prep with her, or do you notice what she's doing, or or as an actor, do you do the research yourself and try and figure out the mannerisms and how to act and sound like them? Yeah, I do a lot of, I I study her a lot, and I've kind of adopted some of her warm-ups for the different characters, some physical things that she does to get into character, I'll do as well, and it just kind of puts me more in her, her mindset and her physicality, um, and I, so I just, I mimic her a lot, watch her, and I watch all the dailies, so um I asked to have those so that I could see everything that they're filming every day. It gets sent to me, and I can watch her play all the characters, even in the scenes that, that aren't clone scenes. Mm -hmm. So that way, on my off days, I can just be watching everything at home. And when I come to set, then I don't have to kind of ask her how, you know, Kasima moves because I've been watching her do it and kind of practicing it at home. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's lots of mimicking, and, and I do my own acting, actory, preparation, voice work, and that kind of thing. But cool. they, I mostly try to adopt her warm-ups. You're just doing the voices just for the, the scene so that uh, Tatiana has a reference, of course, though, right? Yes, yeah. And it's just all in the timing. Yeah. Okay, great. Has there been, uh, from what you just said there, has there been any, like, kind of a vice versa with that? Have there been things that you've maybe done a in a scene as Helena, like maybe like a, a tick or, or something that Tatiana's used then? Like, have you informed... Uh, the character, her and the characters in any way? Um, 
I think a little bit in, in a way. I think I'll, I'll, I'll give most of the praise goes to her for sure. <laughs> um, but sometimes and quite often with Helena, it seems like I'm playing Helena first. And because Helena is so unpredictable, she's, um, she's kind of hard for me to play first because I, I want to have that kind of um, that surprise factor to her when it's, it's a scene between Helena and Sarah. So sometimes I'll throw in a, like a spit or a snarl or something <laughs> that, that she may or may not do afterwards to just kind of keep her on her toes and have that, that surprise factor. Um, so it usually, it usually happens with Helena. Every once in a while, she'll say, like, what did you do there? That was cool. And I'm going to try doing that. But, but most of the, the genius goes to her, for sure. Helena had that great hiss in this week's episode. So when you said yeah. that, I thought immediately about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that, do you have a favorite clone to play? Is Helena your favorite? Yeah, she is a lot of fun. She's she's kind of stressful in the <laughs> sense that, that I don't know how Kat would play it, but that's kind of the hardest one for me to anticipate what she'll do. Hmm. Whereas with, with someone like Allison or Kasima, I can kind of anticipate her, her thought process a little bit more, whereas Helena, you really never know what's going to come out of her. Um, so that, that's fun to play, to have that um, kind of looseness and and just license to to go over the top with her a bit. Um, so that's fun, and and I like playing Allison because she she has that bit of comedic license. Mm. Um, so those scenes are usually, um, although they're quite <laughs> depressing and and traumatic for Allison, they have a bit of a, a comedic tone. So it's it's fun to explore. Are we going to get a chance to see you in front of the camera? Are we going to get to see your face in, in any episodes coming up? Episode 9, right? Episode 9, I, I think I, actually. <laughs> I, well, I, I, I yeah. knew that. Sorry. I was trying to get her to say oh, it. Okay. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, Will. <laughs> Catherine, tell us, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah, episode 9. So you'll see a bit of my, my actual face in, in episode 9. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, I, I, one thing I'm looking forward to, I have to admit, uh, because I saw it once or twice in season one, but I don't think we've seen it yet in season two, is, uh, is more than two clones. So what happens? I know there was one scene with Allison and Cosima, Cosima and uh, Sarah, and uh, I wanted to see, do you have to, to do that? Is there a third <laughs> body double that goes in there, too, or someone else to hold a reference point as well, or, or, or how different is that? Yeah. Yeah, there is another another actor will come in. Mm. Um, so if we do a three clone scene, then then there will be another um, double who um, Heidi Malley and, and Bailey Corneal are are the two kind of stand in mm. photo doubles, um, and they come in when we have scenes like that. So so they're doing all the same work that I'm doing to to mimic um, cast characters, and and then it's kind of just needing to juggle of who are the dominant characters in the scene and, and who will Tatiana play first and who will I play and then mm. who will they play. Awesome. So they, they usually still try and, and um, pair Chat and I as kind of the, the dominant ones playing off each other yeah. just because we're more comfortable playing with each other. But um, but it's it's such a, it all depends on kind of hair and makeup and who needs to be who when. So it's, a little bit of a cluster. <laughs> well, I gotta admit, I'm looking forward to see. I know it must be a lot of work. You'd be like, oh no, I'm doing a scene with you know, three or four of the same person, and uh, it must be a lot of work. But uh, definitely, that's the stuff that I, for some reason excites me when I get to see, because uh, it's just amazing to see Tatiana work. And obviously, you're a big part of that because she's working off of you on all these scenes too. Yeah, that, yeah, they're a lot of fun, and it's they're, it's just so interesting what we can do with the technology so quickly these mm -hmm. days so even on set we're watching it all come together and we can um kind of get uh, right away on set see all of the characters um overlaid on the screen and they're all tatiana um so it's it's really neat to, to have the whole process and see on one screen the the tat and two doubles and then look to the other screen and all three are tatiana so it's pretty neat mm. I think we have a picture. If Stephen, do we have the picture available to put on the screen for? Uh, there it is. Amazing. Yeah. So that uh, we have. Oh yeah, uh, there you are. So you as we have a picture of you as uh, Helena, 
the uh, uh, Prolethean wedding dress. Yes, in, in the in blood shower. Stoned, uh, Prolethean wedding dress in the shower. It's, a, it's in between takes, so Sarah is supposed to be tied up, but she has her hands down. So, and I guess say, yeah, the resemblance, for, it took me a second to realize you were one of the two. So uh, <laughs> it's a really good resemblance if you're just like looking quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and there are, you know, I mean, first of all, you know, uh, your headshot and everything, you just, you look gorgeous as well. So it's not all about Tatiana, it's about you. And I know that she, she you is, are, you are gorgeous. You are gorgeous. <laughs> no, you look gorgeous. You are gorgeous. Don't let just more than that. Yeah. But uh, I was going to say, I, you know, I, as I introduced you, you're probably like right now the best known stand in in the business. I mean, you're not just a stand in, you're, you're an actress. Uh, you're definitely a working actress doing other projects, and people seem to be really rooting for you. The Clone Club, I know, has been really reaching out to you and embracing you. And, and they're very happy to, to get to see you on the show, the actual you, the real person, uh, on episode nine coming soon. So that must be really, really exciting to be a part of this uh, this buzz. Yeah, yeah, it's really neat. And Clone Club is so amazing. Just mm-hmm. the, the fan base for the show has been so incredible. So it's it's neat to have, have a part in that. And it's, it's kind of fun to be a bit of a, a hidden person in the show because the when the diehard uh, fans find out about me, then I know they they really like the show and they've <laughs> really done some digging to figure out who I am. Um, so it's it's neat and it'll be fun to have a little kind of cameo in a sense and and have my face on there. Hmm. We're excited to see it, definitely. Uh, we have one of uh, one of your fans and one of our listeners, and I, I hope I don't uh, butcher this name, but. Uh, tweeted, uh, Lottie Van Tricht wants to know which clone you think uh, would be the best replacement for Allison in Blood Ties and why. I guess if she's stuck in rehab, she's going to need... Who's her under- Who's her <laughs> clone understudy? Oh, wow. That's a good question. Mm. Huh. I, hmm. <laughs> I think... I think Sarah could pull it off because she's pretty good at mimicking people when she needs to. And she, she did a pretty good Allison. So I think she could do it, but I would most want to see Helena. In that, <laughs> for sure. that would be the most interesting it's, by far. And, and wearing that blood-stained uh, wedding dress once she's yeah, doing yeah, it, too, obviously. Yeah, she wouldn't even need to change it's or the, shower or anything. Yeah, it's the role Helena was born to play, blood ties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, really amazing to have you on. Uh, are you, I, I know that Orphan Black was at Comic-Con last year, and I'm, I'm, they haven't announced it yet, but I'm only assuming that they'll have, uh, they'll have a presence at Comic-Con this year, hoping. Uh, is there any chance, I mean, considering, you know, what you do for the show, that you'll be tagging along, joining along with them? I don't know. I would love to. It mm-hmm. would be a lot of fun, but, but I, I haven't heard anything about that yet. But but if I'm not there as part of the show, then I'll, I'll join in as a fan, for uh-huh. sure. <laughs> have, you, have you been uh, recognized or, or at all, or anyone, anyone to kind of realize who you are? out in the real world? Um, no, I don't think so. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, kind of cool. That means it's working. And <laughs> 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 um, that's good. <laughs> okay, awesome. So, uh, you know, again, thank you so much for, for joining us. We're really, really uh, glad that you had some time uh, out on the East Coast to, to call in and talk to us for a little bit. Is there, uh, is there anything, you know, before we go, two things, actually. Is there anything we can look forward to as far as your work, like any, any scene coming up, which obviously you can't give us spoilers, but, uh, but maybe, maybe something, uh, something worth bragging about without giving too much away? Um, Besides your scene video. in Episode 9, obviously. <laughs> Yeah. Would you play? Well, we saw at the the end of this past episode that aired that mm-hmm. uh, Sarah and Helena go on a little road trip. So I think there's some fun times in there yeah. for sure. <laughs> okay. That, <laughs> that keep an eye out for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Awesome. And then uh, where can where can fans from the Clone Club who are not as familiar with you where can they uh, follow you? Uh, well, you can follow me on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm on there and. I don't even know what my Twitter name is. It's like Alexand3 or something like that. Um, so Twitter. Um, <laughs> we'll pull it up. I, 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 it's something like that. I don't want to mess me, it up. Let me pull it up. Uh, it's, I'll just pull uh, it's, it up for you. It's Catherine, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N, Alexand, A-L-E-X-A-N-D, the number three. There you go. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and is there anything else you, uh, you're you working on that we can look forward to seeing you? To actually seeing you instead of... Uh, Instead of just like your body <laughs> in a body. scene, yes. 
Um, actually, mostly what I'm working on right now, I'm producing a film, a uh, short film mm-hmm. called Bound. So that's mostly what I've been doing in terms of uh, in terms of my not so much acting work, but but producing that film. Um, and then I've done little. Um, uh, little kind of day players on like Saving Hope and a couple other Canadian shows. Okay. So you can definitely track those down and uh, my Vimeo page as well has, has quite a bit of my work on it. So you can check out Catherine Alexandria on Vimeo. Awesome. Well, we look forward to definitely uh, seeing more of you uh, on Orphan Black uh, as as yourself and as uh, as one of many clones and uh, also mm-hmm. whatever else he comes up with you. And, and thanks again. You're welcome to come back, call in anytime if you'd like. Great. Thanks okay. so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. All right. We'll take well, care. Bye bye. So awesome. That was great. Captain yeah. Alexander, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So. Such an interesting job to have on a show. Like, I'm fascinated by it. The woman behind the clone, behind the clone, behind the yes. clone. <laughs> behind the clone. Yeah. Yes. It's interesting. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I actually knew, uh, well, we're, we all live out here in L.A., so I actually know a couple of people who've had jobs as stand-ins, but nothing, nothing like doing this kind of work. Yeah, this is amazing work. Nothing that's like a, a stand-in, that that's your yeah. salary job that mm-hmm. you're, it's yeah. More, she's more of a body double. IMDb actually, you know, I don't know, I, she seemed fine being called a stand-in, but it's more like a body double. I suppose, but uh, yes, yeah, she. I'm sure she understands the tough role f- for other people <laughs> to define what it is. Right. But yeah, it's yeah, you know, because it, it, it's also the level of the. Um, if you do have someone who's a body double or stand-in for a movie with like twins or like the Social Network comes from to mind. Mm-hmm. If you do have somebody like that, mm. they're playing one character. She still has to play so many different characters, which right. is what's. Which is what's so amazing about it. And she does the work like an actor. She preps for it. She even said, and, and, and there's a lot of work that gets involved. Wasn't that interesting? It was so interesting that yeah. she does that. It was so impressive. And yeah. again, like it, like stand-ins in, in, uh, in L.A., usually they just like are there for lighting. Yeah. They just they are, are actually stand That's why she's more of a body double. Right. Stand-ins are just there, and they just, uh, and, and they're, for like very blocking. different. Yeah, for yeah. blocking. And, and as you said, on this episode, she had a lot, uh, I mean, she had a, Another there's a great, great scene. scene where they definitely needed her for both Sarah and Helena yeah. in this yeah. episode. It was actually a lot of great moments in this episode so, that called for her unique set of skills. Well, let's get started. Let's actually get started on this episode so we could talk about that scene and everything else. So first of all, this was uh, episode five, and I don't want to mess this name <laughs> up. I got called out on, on flubbing a, through a title before. A little unfairly, maybe. Yeah, I know. I recovered, but it's all good. I'm over it. It's Ips, but I'm going to definitely possibly mess this up. <laughs> Ipsa Sienta uh, Potestas Est. Which I believe means knowledge itself is power. I, I believe, I do not know my Latin that well, but looking at the uh, at the words that I'm seeing, I, that makes sense. I could see that there. Yes. Knowledge is power. Knowledge itself is power. Knowledge itself is power. Beautiful. Awesome. And uh, there definitely is some knowledge that went down in yeah. this episode as well. But let's start off, really. Uh, the first scene uh, that we saw was with Rachel and Paul and Dr. Leakey over at Rachel's apartment. They've discovered Daniel. Uh, Rachel yes. wanted to come in and see that. And we definitely get to uh, learn a little bit about um, the relationship. Uh, actually, we learned a lot about the relationship between Leakey and and Rachel. And it seems to be, we we talked about it a little bit last week, who's in charge. So we definitely get to see this power play this whole episode with the two of them. I very wrongly predicted last week that mm. I didn't think Rachel maybe realized she had a monitor. There was a thing leaky was about, no, Rachel is on board. Yeah. She's drinking the Dyad Kool-Aid. She has a monitor. I mm. love I love that uh, she said to Paul, she was like, uh, you, uh, You'll report to Leaky, but you'll answer to me. I'm your boss. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? He's like, not really. And I just laughed so hard because I was like, yep, that's uh, yep. The rest of us too. <laughs> we're uh, we're trying to figure this out. The hierarchy <laughs> of the Dyad Institute. <laughs> that what? Uh, report to him. Answer to me. Um, so, so yeah. And I was I was thought it was really interesting that Leaky questioned her quote heavy handedness. Yeah. Because I thought. We were all supposed to be afraid of Rachel, <laughs> but here he is questioning. He's her. just questioning. He's not really afraid of her, but so far the way we've seen him, I feel like he's he's just been a different entity. He's been separate from her and, and almost submissive, but mm. but very involved in his own scientific experiments. And she seems to handle more of the corporate side. Well, Leaky clearly 
goes with the idea of like you draw more flies with honey than than mm -hmm. whatever the rest of that expression is. Vinegar. Vinegar, Vinegar. yes. <laughs> but because, I mean, his handling Kasima, he wants to reach out. He wants to kind of bring her in, and that starts to pay off for him later in the episode where Rachel is like, no, Kasima must suffer because of what Sarah did. So th there's... I mean, they're completely diametrically opposed, and clearly they're going to come to major heads at some point because of this. Yeah, oh no, it definitely seems to be uh, gearing up toward that. Uh, but again, really interesting. I, I just love the fact that uh, Rachel is self-aware and was told all this stuff, kind of like... Uh, yeah, just, you know, like like some kids are told, you know, orphans are sometimes told, you know, adopted kid, uh, that they were adopted. And, and she apparently had people who just said, okay, let's make you completely, so let's tell you the whole truth. You're a clone. And and this person's going to be, I, it makes you wonder if Daniel, how long Daniel's been a uh, monitor for her. If it's her first monitor or what else, because she learned at a very early age and her parents died fairly early as well, well her parents supposedly died. She seemed, I mean, for Rachel, she seemed very emotional about the Daniel thing. Mm. Like, she, the way she hovered over the body and the way she even later... Uh, talking about when she with his gun, like almost forgetting he was uh, he was dead. Like it, it was a kind of a rare moment of real emotion coming from her. Like I feel like she feels a loss. With I feel this like there were thing. a lot of emotions yeah. from Rachel, yeah. like, a lot, and she was kept watching that tape, and she I I don't I felt like there was a lot of emotion from her, and that I I, I don't know I don't know what we're supposed to get from that. What do you think? What are we supposed to get from that? Suddenly we're supposed to have compassion for her or what? What's going on? Well, I don't have compassion for her yet because of her heavy-handedness. But, I mean, <laughs> I, I think we're just, I mean, it's just that they're trying to make her more of a fully realized character, not just this stereotypical cold, uh, what was the uh, cold bitch digest well, yeah, that they had her on the cover. It. Well, they have Almost. moments, there, there are moments where, I, I wouldn't say we empathize with her, but we definitely see a little bit of a softer side of her. And uh, and we definitely see, but we, you know, it's also almost sad in a way too, like the way she's dealing with Paul to give him this promotion to become her monitor mm -hmm. and how she, you know, pretty much has him as an employee and is taking her, him to bed with her, you know? It, it's really, really interesting and it's very sad. It, it just goes to show, again, we, we kind of picture uh, her a little bit as a test tube baby. I think a couple of weeks ago, we kind of made it sound like she probably was, you know, because she was with the company that she was isolated. And I believe this really shows that her biggest relationship, her parents, as we saw her look longingly at that videotape, were gone. Yeah. So everyone well, else is ever, an employee. Ever since the death of her parents, it seems like every relationship she has is a power play. And what I loved, since, since you mentioned it, the scene with Paul, what I loved about that uh, sex scene. Well, we'll get into that later. Well, I mean, I don't know. know. Okay. It's impossible to talk about I, Rachel I, I, without talking about that scene. Well, okay, go for it. Because everything is like a power play with her, mm. and even sex is such a power play with her that she has to have someone she can control. There's like a, there's almost like a BDSM thing about it mm -hmm. with her. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> I guess it is. We'll talk more about that later. I want to save that one okay. because well, I feel so, like so, there's it, just so much there. It's so hard to talk no, about no, her without I talking get about it. And well, consider it a tease. Yes. <laughs> I have to say, this is, uh, I, we're jumping all around here, but um, this is also random, but I felt that both Rachel and Helena mm. looked so much more like, I, I, I guess, Sarah. Um, but just Tatiana when she's Tatiana. Just yeah. Imagine. And um, I don't, and I, I know that's a weird thing to say. <laughs> Um, that, that you're saying that Helena and Rachel look like Sarah. That you, that's what you just said. I know that, and I know they're that's clones. a weird thing to they're say. Clones. I know, I know that. <laughs> Are you might th saying really... they're starting to look more like each other than? Because I mean, they all do look different enough. Right. Are you saying like maybe as the sisterly bond yes, is they happening look more like between twins. like Helena and Sarah, they look more like twins? They look okay. more like twins. Is that? I, and, and that's I, not, I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. Y yeah, I, I don't know. I think. Are I mean, you talking? Are you talking emotionally? You're talking. No, no, no. I think. Look, I, I felt like they looked slightly different and okay. slightly more alike, and I, I don't know why that well, is. Maybe the makeup was a little bit. Different. Maybe I think. Well, I think one thing for sure, and we can definitely. Um, this actually is a good segue to talk about. I'll start getting into the Helena storyline. Uh, Helena had some more quiet moments in yeah. this episode. Her energy is usually very all over the place because. 
you, you know, it's very raw energy. But you know, for a while in this episode, because we we definitely see uh, Sarah and Helena, Sarah taking Helena back to the house and then bringing, uh, having Felix bring Helena over to Art yeah. for some questioning. So we definitely get to see her still in this place. Uh, Art trying to relate with her and, and talk with her and finally fed her some food. With Well, what you said about Helena having more quiet moments. And yeah. so, I, I love that because, I mean, here's a woman who has been, I mean, basically she's been raped by these people. She's been completely traumatized. Mm -hmm. And whenever Art's really going in that direction, she shuts down. There's even the great moment where he's frisking, frisking her, her and she doesn't want to be touched because this is someone who's been so abused and now she's just been so recently abused. And I love that she's she she wants to help mm -hmm. uh but she can't bring herself to even address what has happened to her so she does things like leave little games with coordinates of where to go yeah. so she's still helping them but doesn't have to deal with the trauma that's interesting yeah i guess that is a way of coping i would think i didn't i didn't really look at it that way i like that you brought that up because that was a strange scene for me when he's frisking her because um helena has completely flipped out and like slit throats and stuff yeah. when we just mm. were not expecting it and that was a scene when i completely expected her to when art was touching her to yeah. freak out and try to kill him and she was just like i don't like to be touched yeah i, I what i did find that interesting too that she actually i would think that a reaction of, i mean i don't know but i would think the reaction would be a lot more like helena -like. Instinct, helena like but even like with someone who's not like helena like there'd be a lot more of a of a physical action reaction, reaction like just a knee-jerk reaction to, to someone doing that well i think she's trying to in the best way helena can hold it together because mm -hmm. I, there is part of her that wants to be the sister. There's a part of her wants to be the aunt to Kira. I think this yeah. part of her wants to have that thing that Sarah never had either, like a necessarily a proper family that a lot of these clones. So it's had. okay if Art touches me like that. What, but uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I don't blame him. I mean, she had the pen. I mean, it was the right. No, letter, no, it but, was the right move. Yeah. No, absolutely. But I think part of it too is just shows that Helena still doesn't 100% understand. She's not saying I was raped. She's yeah. saying this person did something to me. I don't know, right. you know, she can't describe it. And also, this is the kind of person who obviously has li lived like an animal yeah. and probably mm. have had other physical altercations. Nothing mm. like what happened with her and Hendrix, but mm. physical altercations. So with her, she's probably not as jumpy over something like this. It's more like she does. She knows it was wrong, but she still doesn't understand it. Well, I think she understands it. I, I do. I really believe it's it's a, a trauma thing because Helena is. You know, we've talked about her being childlike and and feral and sometimes. Yeah. But but she's not dumb. Like she knows how to get by enough in a society to be an assassin going around and tracking down clones and, yeah. and hiding in apartments and, and things like that. Like, she can function to a point. Mm. She's not the... So I really do think it's about that, that trauma. And what I love, too, um, about... Helena, this scene, you know, she did seem to have a very relatable. It was kind of like the Jello scene from from season one when she's. It seems like food just uh, tames the savage beast a little bit. Mm -hmm. She's having this really great moment with Art, but then don't forget that it's Helena, and all she needs is a can of sardines to <laughs> just uh, open up her her uh, open up her cuffs and have her just go back to you know deadly dangerous Helena. Now. After Helena uh, escapes there, she <laughs> goes on this, and I actually was wondering what you guys would think of this. She goes to go kill uh, very pretty, dirty, sexy Rachel. And uh, when she had her in her sights there, and she's saying, oh, I could take care of this problem, there was part of me that's like, well, yeah, we'll just, just shoot her. Like, they sh like, Sarah should, I mean, I know killing is wrong, but did you guys think that, I mean, do you think that would have been a good move? I mean, maybe not for the show, but, like, honestly, like, yeah. should she have let Helena do it? Yeah, totally. Like, what's the problem? <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, I, I thought so, too. And I was just, like, I was surprised that she didn't in that moment. I Well, I mean, not surprised for the show, but I was just, like, what's stopping you? Mm. And, Art, you can't do anything. What are you talking I can't let her. You're in this too deep. You know, you, you have this... Well I see Art not being able to let her because just because the law. Well, he's, he's, a, a, he's yeah, he's a. Well, police but he, but, he, but he says that, but he still he has her like handcuffed in his apartment. I'm pretty sure that's not part of following the law. But killing, but killing definitely would be something that would be 
a point of no return, unexplainable, especially totally, if he was involved. Totally agree, but I think he's already past the point of no return. Like, how is he going to explain this? He did help cover up the Maggie Chen killing. I mean, he's, he's fair. That's true. a lot That's of stuff. Yeah. Let people go. I mean, he's well, way okay. too deep but into Maggie, this. Okay, but Maggie, but Maggie Chen is this one character who is apparently, you know, nobody really knows that well. You're you're going to kill the head of the Dia Corporation well, with a also, sniper rifle. He's also helped cover up the Beth Child's suicide. I mean, there's he's he's in. He's in too deep. All right, he's in. But I still think that there's a point where you have to say it, where he's probably saying, okay, you know what? Let me let me at least try and control something here. Helena, to be fair, Helena cannot be controlled so that's really really tough but um let's we'll we'll touch on the finale stuff like a little bit later because there's <laughs> a lot there and let's move on to the uh sarah stuff just just really uh as far as sarah with cal and kira because i thought it was really really an interesting scene with her skyping uh her daughter it was before we go on to that though okay really quickly art said to helena i haven't forgot that you shot at me so he Ran into her, I guess, with Maggie Chen. Yeah. So, so I don't know. So I, there's more history there that uh, that we need to learn about, that we will learn about. Okay, yeah, fair That's enough. That's it. That's it. I just wanted to touch on that. Okay. Go. Awesome. No, no problem. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's just talk a little bit really quickly about uh, Sarah, Cal, and Kara. Not, not many scenes with them, but uh, I thought it was a really, really important scene uh, to notice that Kira was... Not a monkey anymore. She's a leopard, right. and that she just kind of walked away and said, "Okay, daddy's here's daddy," uh, which Sarah had a little bit of an issue with, and uh, I just thought that was a really, really interesting scene. She's warming up to Cal real, real fast. Yeah, and you, I mean, maybe just all years of abandonment by her mother have kind of like she sees a parent figure here now, and and she's gonna cling on to that more than the absentee parent. They also had a really long conversation about socks. Yes. I thought that was strange too. I'm like, is this some sort of symbolism? I don't understand. Well, and, and which I think was a very domestic type of conversation. I mean, she just met him very recently and you're having this conversation and she's even smart on her feet when the police officer came and yeah. knocked on the RV and uh, she put on the little, you know, the little little mask and made it sound like really playful, like, oh, daddy, you know, you're going to burn, you're burning the food. Again. Again. Between the shoplifting and uh, now getting the cop to, to go away in this episode, <laughs> yeah. Kira's really, I mean, if you're on the run, you got to have Kira with track, you. Yeah. She's the one to have with you. She's her mother's daughter, that's for sure. And, and meanwhile, while, of course, uh, you know, that, that I had uh, company has information on Cal based on, I guess, Daniel going up there, too. So Cal's mm -hmm. definitely on the run, and he's in danger as well. Well, they know he has, uh, they said he has anti-corporate leanings. Yes. And seeing that he has, like, you saw him show a, a Washington ID. Mm -hmm. You saw a New York ID in yeah. his camper. He's, I mean, I don't know, maybe there's some uh, corporate, maybe he's a corporate terrorist. Who knows? He clearly does something, he yeah. clearly does something illegal. There's definitely something else there uh, with Cal that we will most likely get to find out very, very soon, I'm expecting. So, uh, also, let's bring up another, a small scene, but still very significant. Let's go back to the farm with uh, Gracie. Poor Gracie, mm. yeah. who, uh, I can't believe I'm saying poor Gracie, but yeah, poor Gracie, who uh, is locked up, <laughs> kind of like as punishment, uh, gets treated kind of like the monster that she claims Helena is, and her mouth is sewn shut yeah. because she will not divulge what happened between her and Helena, which caused Helena to escape. So I thought that was really, really scary and just uh, uh, talk about dysfunctional. I don't know. I mean, punishing some your daughter like that. There, the Proletheans are so interesting because on one side they're doing all this scientific stuff, and then the way they punish people is so almost medieval. Mm. Like it's this. It's really. I, I don't know. I'm kind of fascinated by the the difference between that two. And uh, yeah, no, that was uh, another creepy Gracie scene. Yeah, I felt like that. It was like a horror movie the way the way it looked, and and I kept thinking she's the monster that she called Helena. She has now looks like that monster. But I think the scariest thing about this girl this is this is Hendrick's daughter, and and I, what's the name of the woman? I, it escapes me right now. But it, it seems like it's their child. Yes. And yet, if they don't capture Helena, and they need Helena to put the egg. The, the, to, the, to yeah, carry the to the carry the to carry baby. the embry uh, the uh, yeah embryo I believe the baby and if they don't get Helena Gracie becomes the surrogate mom. That's a creepy thought that I 
I hope we get to see it. So disturbing. <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm really you know it's a little perturbed, but we also get to see a, a one lighter moment with Gracie. It seems like Mark seems to have a little bit of a crush on her. Yeah. So I thought that was a little interesting side note. So uh, maybe There's we'll see some more Prolethean love affair. Going yeah, on. some weird, weird Prolethean love. Um, it's creepy on that ranch. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very creepy on that ranch. Yeah, I don't like it there. So while uh, while Sarah is going, uh, trying to find answers, and uh, and while Helena is um, is uh, <laughs> being trapped by Art and getting uh, deposed by Art, so to speak, uh, let's touch base a little bit with Cosima. Yes. Because obviously uh, this this and Felix obviously play into this, but let's talk about Cosima first because. Uh, Leaky has some information. He has he has some uh, uh, stealth sim research that could benefit Cosima. And Rachel, of course, is in part of her plan to get back at Sarah. Part part A of her plan to get back at Sarah is to deny Cosima all sorts of uh, re all, all her research, just to end all her research, to, to end up trying to discover what is you know how to cure her ail ailment. Yeah. So uh, what we learn a lot there too, and Leaky, what I've loved about this too is is uh, they, you know, Cosima and Delphine find the information anyway. It, ac it accidentally. Yeah. Gets I, sent I mean, to it, them. I think it's pretty clear Leaky leaked it to them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's incredibly interesting. And then uh, when Leaky does discover them looking for the information, Leaky tells us a lot more about Project Lita that we didn't know. That apparently that fire destroyed the original genome. Yeah, that was that was a that was a big bit of information. And that's like the holy grail right there for them because, as Kasima said very easily, <laughs> for those of us who aren't science nerds or don't know that much about this mm -hmm. stuff, it's pretty much the map. It's the genetic map to the clones. Now they said the fire destroyed it, but we also in this episode learn that Rachel's father, Ethan Duncan, yeah. the Swan Man, is still alive. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if the fire really destroyed. I wonder if he has access to well, it. Well, that's wonder... definitely a prediction. That is a prediction. That is definitely a prediction. I like that. You yeah. like that. Uh, I, I feel like I do feel like again. The uh, I actually said it was the Holy Grail because I really feel like. Uh, it is going to probably exist somewhere, yeah. and there is going to be some kind of quest to find it. Which will be great. Which will be which will be awesome to see that. But uh, but it's really interesting to see Leaky kind of work behind Rachel's back with Cosima, and he said he's going to continue funding them and letting them uh, do their experiments and and work on curing her of this uh, of this disease that she has. Yeah. So very, very interesting. Also, Cosima found out, I guess, from that other guy who she was on Skype with, it sounded like this might be still, again, the military gets brought, brought up because mm -hmm. back then with the patents, it only makes sense for the military to be behind this. So it's really interesting to see um, what the government has to do with this. Yeah. Well, I think that her Skype friend, Scott, is uh, going to become more of a player because she's Skyping with him in every episode. Yeah. So he's he, got a crush on her too. Yeah. It's so totally. obvious. Obviously. So obvious. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he and now he's getting a little bit pushy. Why can't I come help work on your secret project? And Casima mm. seems open to it, but Delphine not so much. And also this episode, uh, I think it's very clear. There's no question left. Uh, Delphine is in love with Casima and. Will doing only has her best interest, um, you know, yeah. risking being in trouble with Leaky. Yeah, or, you I, know, this is I don't care. This is hmm. a treatment for you. You're going to be better. We're going to do this. In the in the realm of orphan black characters that we don't know whether we can trust or not, I'm all in on trusting Delphine. Delphine. Yeah. Well, yeah, you. you definitely have uh, Delphine as a monitor who seems to really truly love. Cosima, or at least, or at least, is invested in her welfare, and then of course on the other side we have Paul, who obviously Man. we have no idea if he's on Team Rachel or on Team Sarah or, or team what's Leaky. going on with that, predictions or Team Licky. I know predictions on that, <laughs> but uh, but speaking of Paul, let's move let's move on to Felix because well, first of all, we get to see Felix in some nice little montage getting brother ready Sestra. and getting brother Sestra. Ooh, I <laughs> love that by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he's a uh, he's like a sister. Uh, he's my brother. So he's like a sister to us, a yeah. brother Sestra. But um, yeah, 
we get to see him in some montage of Tears for Fears getting ready for his date with the, the guy from the morgue. Yeah. The director, of the, uh, the the guy that works in the morgue. And then uh, next thing you know, uh, you've got the police coming, a federal agent to look like, and Paul. Yeah. And what a really interesting scene because we went from this whole... First of all, let's talk about if you don't mind, because we're gonna definitely talk about the we're gonna talk about the clone sex. But that was a very suggestive scene between Felix and and Morg guy, uh, which I thought was really really interesting. Well, I, 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 I just thought it was incredibly interesting and very revealing. You know, there was a little bit of a of a of a hint at Oral, and then he and then uh, uh, with Felix, and then the guy pushed him away, and then he got the lube out, and right when the FBI comes in, it's like. More guys yeah. got a, got a, like a, a couple of fingers of lube, and it's obvious. It's very suggestive on what's going to happen next. Well, I love the way that that scene played out because it was nice to give Felix like a really human, ev- like a really everyday, like relationshipy yeah. moment. Yeah. And then, of course, take that away from him. But like watching that, I was kind of lulled into like mm. the Felix show for a little while. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, oh, okay, oh, good, good things are working out with him and the more guy. And then, yeah. oh, we know. haven't seen him like this in a couple of episodes. Yeah, it was yeah. nice to see Felix. Finally, like, having his own life. Yeah, yeah. Felix being Felix. Ugh. Yeah. But what... Poor kid can't catch a break. No. <laughs> no, but what really... What I, the reason why I bring this up, too, is because when Paul comes in, pretty much, and then all of a sudden starts grabbing Felix and throws him on the, ca- on the couch the way he did with the gun to his head, it was almost the exact same position that Felix was in when he got when he got interrupted yeah. anyway. But it was a completely different, terrifying scene. Actually, uh, BBC, they had a little clip in between the commercial break talking, uh, Dylan and Jordan, the actors, talking about that scene, how intense that scene was. Mm-hmm. But uh, I thought it was a very, very scary side of Paul. All of a sudden, we finally get, we, I don't want to say we finally do, but he, I guess he feels he's put up to a wall enough that he has to do this for Rachel, and he threatens Felix like that. Well, it's, yeah, Paul has become actually He's actually become an interesting character in that he is so black, and the way Dylan Bruce plays him, mm. it, it, it's everything is so close to the chest. And that scene, yeah, during that scene, I'm like, oh my god, no, he really is all the way on the other side. But then I'm not buying it later. Yeah. When in a, you know, I have, I am at a complete loss how to read Paul. Mm. At this point, but that scene was cold and that was upsetting. It was it was pretty upsetting because I think uh, I think when he's playing middle of the road, it's kind of nice not to know what side he's on. But something like that felt very very drastic, and scary, and threatening Felix, and then of course framing Felix, that, which causes Sarah to go look for more information to try and and uh, you know because that's what that's what Rachel ultimately wants, and the Swan Man and all that finding out uh, finding out the Swan Man is actually uh, one of the founders is Ethan I believe his name Ethan is Ethan Duncan yeah, yeah Ethan Rachel's Duncan father. who's alive, um, but you know Felix gets to have some fun in his scene, and then we get to see Paul, <laughs> which we haven't seen in a while. And as Sarah so nicely said at one point of the episode, he's got three uh, clone not, uh, clones on his notch. Uh, uh, not, notches on his belt. On his clone belt. Yeah, exactly. Uh, very, very steamy scene. Very interesting scene between Paul and, uh, and Rachel. What do you guys think about that? It was steamy. <laughs> well, like, like as, uh, as uh, Helena said, a very pretty, dirty, sexy Rachel. Yeah. She, um, well, like I was saying before, I mean, everything with her is a power play. Now we see that even sex is about, because she's clearly enjoying it. It's yeah. not just like to, to put Paul in a place. She's clearly getting off on this. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, that's the way Rachel does but, business. Mm-hmm. Did Paul look interested in it? Paul didn't look interested at all to me. That's why I wanted to wait for this to bring Paul's side of it, because I feel like it was really... Well, first of all, he definitely got a, a very hot body. All right, let's just put it... I, I think E just nominated him sexiest ass on television. Oh. Yeah. Oh, good for so, him. So, good little news. But uh, very, very sexy guy. Very, very different kind of scene than uh, I, Kitchen Island sex that we've seen with him and Sarah. Sure. Uh, very different type of scene for both actors. Um, but I think it also says, what side is he on? He obviously doesn't want to sleep with her, it doesn't look like. Yeah, well, you know, again, you know, I talked about Helena being violated early, and in a way, I mean, this is a violation of, of Paul. I mean, there's a mm. gender reversal, like, I mean, do we want to call what Paul went through a rape also? He had no choice. Mm. I don't know. Well, I mean, he is getting paid, so. <laughs> but, I mean, they have, they have Afghanistan on him. 
And now they have Taiwan on him too. <laughs> so, well, well, what the hell happened to Taiwan? Uh, I think closed a big deal. I big feel like I deal. think it, yeah. You know, it, it seemed like when they talked about Taiwan, it almost seemed like they probably had sex in Taiwan too, because there was a little bit of a hint yeah. there because they you, both went together. But you know what? I don't. I don't think that even though they alluded to it, I don't think they did. Because I don't think so either. Paul, now. in the sex scene, Paul didn't know not to like touch her, or you're gonna get smacked in the face. Yeah, like you, she has no, to direct it felt, everything. It felt very and, much like a first time. And just the look on her face. I mean, she was getting off on the idea. Idea of directing him. She tells him to go get a chair from the other side of the room, and as he walks away, her mouth is open. She's ah, like, you know, she is. I, I mean, gotta admit, she was that. hot. I, I gotta admit, it, it was a power play. It was all that, but I, I gotta say, Rachel, Rachel was pretty hot in that scene. You know, yeah, it, taking control. It it was like um, it was a little soft ish Yeah, it really was. Well, it was definitely one of the things that made uh, Orphan Black trend on Twitter on Saturday. It was actually the third highest. Uh, <laughs> TV show that was tweeted about on Saturday. Nice. So, and it was a lot about, yeah, I think it was a hashtag clone sex or something like that uh. involved. So it was definitely a very steamy scene. And of course, on the other side, leading to the ending is, uh, is uh, Helena with the sniper rifle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, trying to get Sarah to look and see uh, Paul and uh, Rachel having sex, uh, which I guess, I guess is just her way of trying to get Sarah to trust her because I guess she feels, you know, that she still uh, has feelings for Paul. I, she it seemed yeah. like she really wanted to just go look at Paul cheating on you. I don't know what do you what, what do you guys think of that? I thought it was a really interesting play. It's like she could have killed Rachel, as we talked about earlier. Yeah, but she chose not to and have Sarah look and see what they were doing. Yeah, she clearly wanted Sarah. She was clearly waiting for Sarah, whether she was going to pull the trigger or not. She wanted her to witness this mm. this event. And I think again, it's part of this. I think Helena is in this weird position where she is legitimately trying to be a good sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I do. I yeah. do too. She loves Sarah so much. I really do. And I think, I think she just, I think she just wants to be good to Sarah, no matter what. And mm -hmm. I think that she saw Rachel doing this, and I think she's confused about uh, Sarah's relationship with Paul. And um, I think we're all confused. About I think, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's. I think that's fair. Um, but saw Rachel doing this and um, just, I think she wanted to, um, I, I think she wanted Sarah to see how good she was, how, yeah, how good she was going to be to Sarah by taking out Rachel. Um, yeah. And possibly, Paul, like, look what I'm going to do for you. But then, of course, Sarah doesn't even look. Just that she just puts herself in between the sniper rifle and and Rachel, a pass, the possibility of, of ending this whole thing with Rachel and or Paul <laughs> and uh, <laughs> confessing that she, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, weird. that's kind of I mean, that's her sister, yeah. And that is someone who looks like it. And pulling the trigger on that, and you notice how early in the season she never told anybody that she killed Helene. The language she would use, like Helene is gone, like mm. she could never even bring herself. And when she said about how um, she can't explain what it meant to to do or to 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 shoot her or what she was dealing with, I thought of that in the first episode where she couldn't even say like I killed Helena. Yeah. The yeah. um, you know, we we had touched upon it before, the idea of with possibly ending things with Killing Rachel. I mean, beyond the fact of then you don't have a good villain for your show. But, <laughs> I mean, I guess there could be this... I mean, do you think the idea of these this clone sisterhood goes as far to Sarah that she would rather deal with Rachel in a different way than just blow her away? I don't know. Uh, I, I, as of right now, I, I just, just don't think she likes her at all. I mean, she look. She, oh, she she's about to frame Felix for for murder. So I, well, I think she really. But at the same time, she doesn't. I, I feel like she was protecting Helena more so than. Well, first of all, if she if, does have dirt also to she give does have Rachel dirt, with but, the Swan Man, her yeah, father. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. She wants to protect Felix because what happens if she shoots Rachel? Is it really over? It's a corporation she's against. It's but Rachel is that figurehead. That she's fighting against. Yeah, I feel at that point. There's then, still Leaky, who she doesn't trust. Yeah, but Leaky, who she didn't trust until Kasima set up that meeting afterwards. Yeah. let's just say. But I think there's enough reason for her to say, okay, I want to take down Rachel, but this doesn't feel like the right way, and it's just causing more trouble. And and I think again, it's like she wants to put a little control. Helena is so unpredictable. And I thought it was a really touching scene. I get yeah. Oh yeah, it was a beautiful scene. Yeah. That obviously, I, I mean, it's it kind of gets. Annoyingly repetitive to say that Tatiana Maslany acts the hell out of. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, 
I know, but it was, it was, I mean, just impressive. Mm, So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. (laughs) So, Mm. (laughs) I I loved it. I loved it. I just loved it. She just bared her soul out to Helena and said, I I thought you were dead. And after I, after I thought I killed you, she kind of realized in a way uh, what she lost. And that's where you make me cry. Yeah, that was, that was actually a really sweet moment where you see Helena then in tears herself. And I I can't, and uh, uh, Catherine mentioned it in the interview, I can't wait. Till we see them on this road, road trip, trip next yeah. week. I mean, that's uh, that's a. Oh, I would watch a whole series of that. Yeah. Hell, I'd watch oh, a God. whole series of Helena living with Felix. I, I, I feel <laughs> I, I want them to have a Thelma and Louise moment for some reason, like about to jump off a cliff yeah. or something. I really want to see that. But yeah. uh, leading up to that, let's just uh, we'll, we're going to wrap this up because we're running a little long. But um, you know, we see Leaky with Sarah uh, and Sarah talking about the Swan Man and about to go on a on a mission there. But what was even more interesting is Paul's following Leaky, so he discovered this whole thing. He's about to be on this road trip too, at somewhere in, in back of them, and uh, whoever. Ethan is, it could be dangerous to everyone, according to Leaky. So there's definitely more to that mystery that, you know, uncovering Ethan could just definitely is a bigger piece of the puzzle that Leaky knows about that uh, he's still not revealing. Maybe Leaky's even responsible for... uh the fire for all we know maybe he went against them in some way who knows who mm. knows what this guy could reveal but it it seems to that everybody thinks it's bad news for sarah for rachel for everyone to know that yeah. he's out there the swan man is out there yeah what do you think i don't and it looks like he hasn't aged a day <laughs> which is strange leaky yeah i guess that's true it no the swan oh, that man. Guy, swan man yeah uh I mean, he had a hoodie on, right? Yeah, a grainy a, photo. It was yeah, a grainy, grainy photo. photo. It still looked like he had an age. Well, he didn't look 70, but I we'll, we guess we'll, we'll find out we'll very find that, soon, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, let's move on to some predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Well, you started with a prediction of your own, but you got anything else for us? Um, I have kind of a fun non-Orphan Black, Orphan Black prediction, since I already said some stuff. Okay. Uh, I loved this week watching Saturday Night Live. Tatiana Maslany popped up this Mm. week in a digital short. She was only there for 10 seconds, not long enough. Awesome. Uh, Seems to be a favorite of a lot of the, you know, she'd been on Parks and Rec. Seems to be a favorite of a lot of that crew. Uh, Next season, I'm making a prediction. Saturday Night Live host Beautiful. Tatiana Maslany. I like that. Mm. I really do like that uh, prediction. I, and I, I, you know what? I believe it's going to happen. I'm yeah, pretty sure. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. Uh, I I predict that um, Paul is actually still completely on Sarah's side mm. and um, is just using this because we've talked a lot about how Paul really wants to help Sarah but doesn't have any leverage. Is in a, a position of power. I think he's doing this to help Sarah to be in a position of power. Because what, I, I mean, how much more power can you have than to be in bed with Rachel? Come on. So uh, so I think he's totally still on Sarah's side. And it looks like there's a scene between him and Mrs. S next week. So maybe yeah. we'll get more where they the recognize, Where they recognize each other. So that's yeah. going to be... That's going to be really, really interesting. You know, I'm just going to say it because I f- feel it's weird at this point, but might as well. I have a feeling in somewhere down the line, maybe sooner or later, Helena and Paul are going to get it on. Maybe mistaken <laughs> identity. Maybe Helena's pretending to be Rachel or somebody else, but there's going to be another notch on the clone belt for Paul. I love it. That's what I'm going to say. Will Link, where can we find you during the week? Uh- on Twitter at the Real Will Link. Also, I host a pop culture podcast on the Westcast Network called Will Sean Podcast. So give that a listen. Anna, where can we find you? You can follow me at Koppel for Mayor, K O P P E L F O R M A Y O R. You can find me on Twitter at Nandovel, N A N D O V E L. You can find us all here also on other various shows on After Us. Please rate us on iTunes. Please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, rate us, comment. We'd love to see that. Uh, thank you for keeping us on the top. Also, thanks to our guest, Catherine Alexander, who was great. You can catch her on Twitter. I'm not going to say the name, but you can catch it earlier. Otherwise, tune in next week. Matt Lieberman will be joining us. You can catch him on Matt Lieberman uh, on Twitter. And thank you so much. It was a lot of information. Right thank you. Tune in next time. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. 
We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.